greetings you. <laughs> Great day to be in the house of the Lord today. So whether you're joining us online or in person, why don't you stand and join us uh, as we worship.
is what a beautiful name it is the name of jesus you didn't want heaven without us so jesus you
I want to invite you guys just to close your eyes just for a moment. I usually don't do this, but I'm going to read a scripture, and I want you to picture it as the words here described for us this morning. Genesis 1, verse 1 and 2 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Darkness was formed. Light wasn't even made. And yet the Spirit of God rested there. As we were worshiping, I just felt led that some of us were... We're feeling like we're in some dark places. Some hurt, some fear, some anxiety, some whatever it is. But you're feeling like it's really dark and formless. But yet, Genesis 1 here says, the Spirit of God is hovering over you. He's watching over you and protecting you. He creates you. He knows your innermost thoughts. He knows my innermost thoughts and in those moments where I'm just having a rough week and I need him more than ever before. And yet there's power as well in that. I need you all to know in your darkest moments, Jesus gives you power. Maybe for, for some of us, it's just to wake up the next day. But for others, we're, we're going, hey, I, I, I've, I've wanted to share with my neighbor about this Jesus that I follow. But I'm so nervous. Jesus gives you power to do that too. Some of you are facing all kinds of struggles and you're feeling, I, I can't do it on my own. No, you can't. I can't. But with Jesus, he gives us power to overcome. Chains are falling. Chains are falling, and we hear them. That's a beautiful thing about coming together as a church. So we get to hear the chains of other people's lives falling. So I, I just want to pray over us before we transition from this moment. Lord Jesus, oh Lord. Would you just hover over my friends? And surround them with your presence and your comfort, Lord. Just as you did before all of creation, you hovered there. And yet you still just walk with us today. So Lord, be with us all, Lord. And, and God, I pray that we would recommit ourselves. And Lord, we, we might need a fresh touch from you. But God, I, I, I just pray that we would continue to pursue you even further today. Lord, Scripture says, as we draw near to you, you draw near to us. And so, Lord, I, I pray for any, any step in this room, Lord. Lord, I know that you will take many steps towards that individual. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you, worship team, for, for leading us in a time of worship today. Really appreciate it. If you have not already in-house, you are welcome to grab a seat uh, this morning. And listen, just a couple of announcements to run by you. I, I think my mic is running a little hot uh, this morning. Uh, however, if you are in-house with us, we do have our offering uh, that is in the lobby uh, there as we continue to worship uh, through our giving, our finances, our tithing, and our, our gifts there as well. And online, you can find some uh, details on the screen as well. Uh, without further ado, let me dismiss our tweens. Uh, if you're new here, tweens is our, our, our tagline for our grades four to seven students. And, uh, and as they head out, we are going to see half of our congregation disappear, which is a lovely, lovely thing. And, uh, and it's a good time. So Lord, be with them as they go. And uh, Lord, be with their teachers as they serve you. Amen. Amen.
Listen, it's, uh, it, it's been some time. I feel like uh, whenever I come up here, it's always a, a fun pleasure to speak with all of you guys because last time I was doing a youth service and now I'm doing all of you guys together. I, I see first service people and second service new people. I see some new people here. Uh, and that's a great, great thing to have all of you guys uh, with us. Listen, I started about three years ago here at Kingsview and uh, best three years of my life. Uh, and it's been a great, great time here. Here, uh, getting to know many of you guys here. But when I started here at, at Kingsview in July of 2019, uh, many of you guys may remember and many of you guys may not remember, and that's okay, but we had been walking through the various different kinds of uh, parables throughout Scripture that Jesus was using. And Pastor Josh was faithfully walking us through all that. And then in about September of 2019, he started us through the book of Romans. And so today I'm here preaching from Romans, the series that he started in September 2019. And uh, so fast forward about three years later, guys, we're still here. But I will tell you, I will tell you, I, I, I'm serious. We have an end date in line. I walked through the preaching schedule with Pastor Josh and Pastor Jordan. We have an end goal in line. But this isn't a, a knack to be like, Pastor Josh, like, let's go, buddy. Like, get us the next scripture here. No, in fact, actually, and, and Pastor Josh is not with us. He's actually serving at a camp uh, outside of the province uh, right now. And, uh, but this isn't a knock to him. This is actually a thanksgiving to Pastor Josh. I think many times we rush scriptures. We rush them and go, hey, let me just re read the Bible in 365 days. Let me read the Bible in a month. Let me, and those are all good things. But seldom do we allow the Holy Spirit to reveal in us what he has to reveal in us. See, I have conversations on a daily basis. I have moments with myself on a daily basis where I'm reading scripture and I walk away going, well, that, nothing spoke to me in that one. N got nothing out of that. And it surprises me time and time again how many conversations I have with individuals where they read this book and they walk away going, got nothing from it. Josh has been working through one book there are multiple other books in this book, and it's taken the guy three years to get through it. And it's funny, it is, it is really comical. Uh, however, at the same time, the richness of this word, of this book, is so evident. It is so clear that it's not our job to just rush it and go, okay, I, I, I read it all, but allow the Holy Spirit to speak through his word. And I agree, and I hope you guys would agree here, that Pastor Josh has done an incredible job of walking us through Romans, of the people of God, of the Holy Spirit, and the, uh, uh, of baptism, and all these other different mini-series that have branched off from this Roman series. But it's important to know that these words mean something. I think sometimes we're so quick to actually go into scripture and go, what does it have to do with my life? We go, hey, what, what, what can I get from it? What, what does it mean for my life today? But rather, I would encourage you as we approach these moments, rather than a selfish mindset to a selfless, to go, hey, God, how can I get to know you further through your word? I think sometimes we had one of the, a great moment of worship. Thank you, everyone who, who served us in this morning. However, sometimes we're going, ah, ooh, drums sounded off. Oh, Dave, you're amazing. Dave, oh, all right. Uh, Dave, you can preach. I'm going to step out. No, uh, we, we, we can go, wow, uh, he sounded out of key and she sounded really amazing. And uh, we can do all these things. But man, oh, I was at Catalyst Conference. This is a conference that takes place in Atlanta, Georgia. I was there in 2012. And Francis Chan, he was speaking. There. He came after this amazing moment of worship. And he goes, hey, give it up for our worship team. And the whole like 60,000 people in that stadium went nuts. Went berserk in that place. And then he just allowed the whole place to just settle down and find their own. And then he goes, how about this? Before I go into the word, let me get, let's give it up for God. And it was just like a, it was like a golf clap, you know? <laughs> and in Francis Chan moment, he goes, oh, 
How embarrassing. And the whole room. Conviction there. And this is why I firmly believe as we approach the word of God, it's less about us. It's more about him. As we approach worship, it's less about these amazing people. It's more about that amazing person who would come and dwell with us for 30-ish years and take our price that went. Before I approach our, our, our scripture this morning, I want to take a moment and just pray. Pastor Josh usually uh, has you guys pray for you. I'm not Pastor Josh, clearly. Uh, I, although I was told by an individual that we look like siblings, so I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, but uh, in, in, in this moment, as I pray, it's actually not to kill time. It's not to sound more holy than anyone. Like That's not the purpose here. There's actually three purposes, and I've wrote, wrote, written them down, as to why I take a moment to pray before I approach Scripture. The first is this to invite God here. He's here already, but we ought to give him permission to be here as well. Sometimes we we go into a scripture reading, we go into a moment of worship, and we haven't even paused to say, God, you're welcome here. Can you come here? The second is this, to actually ask God to help us be aware that he's here. Sometimes literally God could be right here, and we're not even aware of it. How many times have my kids been going, hey, dad, 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 and all I'm doing is on my phone? How many times do we do that with God? And we, he's literally right here, and all we're doing is completely unaware. The last thing is as we approach Scripture, Scripture is a beautiful thing. This is why it's so rich. But what it means for you over here is going to be completely different for me and for you, for you and you and everyone in this room here this morning. But God has something in store for each and every one of us, both individually and as a congregation as well. And so it allows him to to reveal those things. So let me just pray, and would you join with me in prayer this morning? Lord Jesus, I thank you for you. I thank you that you're a God who's not far away, but you're here and near to our hearts. And so, Lord, I pray as we approach your scripture this morning that you would be honored and glorified through everything that is said this morning. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me. And Lord, it would be your words, but not mine. And that any preparation time that I've put into this, Lord, that I would just seek to bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen, if you have your paper Bibles, I always encourage paper Bibles because I'll be honest, I use my mobile phone and I get the ding, ding, ding from like, you know, someone texting me. Dave is probably being like, I'm actually a really good drummer. And, uh, and we get various different kind of messages. And then I'm like, oh, now I'm texting Dave. And I love you, brother. Uh, and, and we get carried away in those moments. I, I tend to find that a paper Bible is just the easiest way. And it's also beautiful because in that moment, you can actually reflect to what was before, what is after, et cetera, et cetera. It's just a vision strong moment there. So if you would go to Romans chapter 12, we are picking up right at verse 3. Pastor Josh did a phenomenal job last week with his ordination service, uh, covering with us verse 1 and 2. And as you guys are flipping or scrolling, whatever, to get there, let me just give you guys a little bit of context. This guy, Paul, who once was Saul, as his Jewish leader, prominent Jewish leader, he knew his stuff. He was out killing Christians for a living, before he had a miraculous revelation from God himself. And now he is the most prominent person writing letters for people who are looking to follow Jesus. And so these are his words as he's sharing unto others in Rome, a.k.a. Romans. And uh, and this is where we pick up verses 3 to 8. So chapter 12 of Romans, here we go. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as we have one body with many members, then these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it 
cheerfully. This is why it's taken Josh three years to get through this scripture. I'll tell you this much. I was stuck on verse three. When I was given this scripture to go through, I was stuck. And you will catch me at what I, under, you'll under, come to understand me as we go through this. Because a good portion of my, me, my message this morning is on verse three alone. This is why it takes us three years to go through a 16 chapter book. Three years. And many of us will go, and it didn't speak anything to me. There's great power. And I already trust, before I even say anything further, I trust as we've read this scripture that God is already beginning to speak to you. The whole premise here of verse three is, is really tackling this item of humility. And oftentimes we th- when we think of humility, we think of one kind of person. It's very easy to think of that person. There are two kinds of people when it comes to humility. And, and Paul is very smart when he's writing these words. The first person when it comes to gaining more humility, is the one who's a little arrogant in their manners. If you're having a hard time understanding, if you're going, oh, I've never been arrogant, okay, great. Let me share a story about when I was arrogant, okay? Let's go back to Brian. He's grade 11, okay? So what, 16, 17? I think I got the, the age right there. Our youth group, my family had invited our whole youth group to come over to our place one Friday night. And so my, my youth pastor, my youth leaders, we had brought a whole bunch of youth over to my house. We're hanging out at our house. We're, we're having some chips and some hot dogs, hamburgers, junk food, you know, just the good youth stuff. And, uh, and we're hanging out. And then I had the idea. I was like, hey, you know what? Let's burn some energy. Let's go to my local pu- public school and let's just play some hoops. Let's play on the jungle gym. Let's just go over there. Okay. So a huge crowd, 20 to 30 of us, we all just start going down to my elementary school. And so we're all there playing, you know, doing some grounders. I, I've heard some people call, call grounders another name, but that's, it's called grounders. And, and, and so as we go, we're playing all these games. And then my buddies and I, we're all shooting hoops, okay? There, there's this basketball net where it's literally like a pole goes up and it forms four different basketball nets off of it. And so most people play on this one because it's the shortest. And because if, you, if you've ever played basketball here, the goal isn't to get the ball in the net at that age. That's not the goal. The goal is, hey, can you touch the rim? The goal is, hey, can you grab the rim? Hey, can you Vince Carter and get your elbow like into the rim? Like that's the goal here when it comes to a basketball time. So anyways, my buddies and I were all shooting hoops. And, and I remember watching one of my buddies. He's, he's starting to jump and actually cling on to it. I don't have hops, nor will I ever. Um, and uh, don't laugh. That's not nice. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> sober judgment. Uh, and, and, and so uh, as I'm watching them all, I'm like, wow, they're really cool. I'm not, but that's okay. And so uh, as I'm watching them all go, they start going, hey, Brian, you give it a try. You're actually one of the tallest here. You give it a shot. And I'm like, yeah, I'm the tallest, but I can like, that's my jump. And and, uh, I'm like, no, 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 give it a shot. Like we're doing the the shortest net, okay. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And so I remember lining myself up, looking at the net. And I'm like, all right, here goes nothing. And as I go, I start running towards the net. And I start thinking to myself, oh man, I'm actually getting some good speed. Like, whoa, the Holy Spirit is real this moment. And so I'm like taking this trajectory towards the net. I'm like, okay, I I think I can actually touch the rim. And so as I jump up towards the net, I'm going, you know what? I think I, I, I don't think I can just touch it. I think I can actually hold it. This is exciting. Like, oh my goodness, I'm literally going to be the coolest youth here ever. I got this moment. And so I jump up and I'm like, yeah, sure. The rim is like to here. I'm like, I got this. I got this. Oh, I'm so excited. My head is like on fire at this moment. I'm just, I'm in my element. And so I grab onto this rim. I'm like, I did it. I actually did it. I'm like, I, and I literally start to utter those words. And remember, I didn't really take into account of actually doing this in the first place. I was just thinking, oh, just slap the mesh and call it a day. And, and so I, I, as I go and grab it, the trajectory of my lower half 
continues to carry on as I'm, as I'm holding the rim. And now my whole body's parallel to the ground. And I'm, I'm about, you know, eight-ish feet off the ground. And it occurs to me, oh dear. My hand gives out and I just fall right to the ground. Wind knocked out of me. Don't worry, I wasn't concussed or anything. The, the concussions came a few later, a few years later in life. And, uh, and, and so I literally hit the ground and all of my buddies swore me. A few of them, are you okay? Other guys, yo, that was the best thing ever. Like, that was incredible. And, and, and meanwhile, I'm like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, and, and, and man, did I ever look like a fool. But I think we've all been in that same place here where we've gotten ourselves, we we think so highly of ourselves. We want to show off what we got. We want to say, hey, check this out. I actually can do that. And, And we start to get into our head like, I got this. I got this. And then we just look like a fool. I, I, honestly, I wish, like, there, there's kind of wishes that I ever think, like, that I think about when I reach heaven. Hey, God, can you show me, like, a virtual tour of this? I want to get, like, a bird's eye view of what just happened Brian Hempstead there, because uh, it probably looked really silly. However, when we read Romans 12, we can oftentimes think of a story similar to that. However, if you actually know the context, which we probably got the context of Romans back in September of 2019, but the whole Roman book is actually talking to Christians living in Rome who are under great persecution from the Roman Empire to follow their faith. They're being threatened to abandon their faith. They're being told, hey, if you, if you don't renounce your faith, you will die. Hey, you should stop believing in God. And they keep on going on and on about this. If you really think it through, how can it be possible, though, for any Christian or anyone who is under persecution to think more highly of themselves when they are already so low as is. So verse 3 could feel a little out of place, honestly. These Christians living in Rome who are under a great deal of persecution, and now you have Paul coming over, hey, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Are you kidding me, Paul? Are you kidding me? Like, you don't even know what you're talking about. That's the silliest comment I could ever hear you saying. And you might be here this morning thinking, yep, I can relate to those Romans. Yep, I, I barely have confidence in myself to begin with. So that this verse does not apply to me. I, I, I'm already so low as, as is, how can I think of myself more highly than I ought to? But you see, Paul, he didn't write these words because the Christians in Rome were already exemplifying it. He didn't write these words because, you know, the Romans were doing a good job. He wrote these words to actually give them direction. He gave these words to actually give them uh, correction to their behavior here. Let me, let me uh, I think of someone who, who lived a few, few years ago, a little more recently than Paul did. And he has this great quote that w- might just help us understand where he's going today. This guy's name is Clive Staples Lewis. Many of you guys might actually know him as C.S. Lewis. And he went on to write many, many, many books. Many of the most popular books being... uh, Wrong one, but good try. Good try. Narnia. Narnia. Many of us would be familiar. uh, By the way, Prince Caspian movie, best one of the trilogy. Just my my personal preference there. But C.S. Lewis, he writes this statement. He has this very well-known quote that I think would help us today understand where Paul is going. And it goes like this. True humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. Let me say that once more. True humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. I can only imagine Paul as he's writing this letter to the Roman Christians. He's feeling burdened with a mission. He's saying, I need to get this, these words out to the Roman Christians. They, they need to hear this. It's a heart issue, not a doing issue. Because as Josh has spoken time and time and time and time and time again, that it's always a heart issue. The, out of our heart, 
the mouth speaks. Out of the heart, it does. Out of the heart, it says. Out of the heart, it gives. Out of the heart, it serves. He knows that it's out for the heart. I don't know about you, but over the last few years with everything going on, when things get hard, when we are under persecution, we tend to do this. We look for our own well-being. We tend to look a little more selfishly and go, yeah, I, I, I can't give because I barely even have food for myself. You know, I can't go to church because I'm so busy or I, I, I can't go and forgive that person because they owe me this. Regardless of the circumstance, when, when the pressure is on, when the persecution is coming at us, we tend to become very selfish and our guards are up. And we start to say, no, 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 let, I'm going to fight my, for myself. No one else will fight for me. Let me fight for myself. And I think Paul is very aware that these Roman Christians are becoming very self-centered in their lifestyle, in their hearts. They're not necessarily saying the things, but it's certainly finding root there. And he needs to tackle this. I, uh, I, when it comes to humility, I oftentimes think of one of my favorite passages of Scripture. If you ever ask me what, what's your favorite passage of scripture, I would have a few, Matthew 5, Matthew 6 being them. But Exodus 3 is shortly in behind. For many of us, we're like, Exodus 3, whatever. But Exodus 3 is a very powerful scripture. And, and I promise you that Pastor Josh has already spoken on this somewhere. And so you can find it on YouTube. And, but Pastor Josh has already touched on this. So I'm just going to touch on it for a moment here. But if you would using your paper Bible or your phone Bible. Uh, if you would, go to Exodus chapter 3 this morning, and we're going to be reading from verses 1 through 6. It goes like this. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire and did not burn up, Sorry, let's skip. Yeah, uh, Mo Moses saw that the, though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him, called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. We see God is, gr we already know. I don't need to preach on this a long, long ways. But we know that God is greatly interested interested in Moses. We know that. It's very clear to see his great interest. It, and that is a whole other story that Pastor Josh has tackled really well for us. But we see that he's greatly interested in Moses. He's greatly interested in the Israelites. However, in this moment, he wants to see how interested Moses is in God. Does he take a moment to actually consider who God is? Do we even take a moment to acknowledge God in our doings and our goings and our beings? Are we so caught up in going, no, no, God, you just bless what I do and I'll just keep on going. God is interested here. Hey, does this man want to do and be a man after me? So taking sandals off. Taking sandals off is a big, big deal in those days. Uh, sandals meant protection for your feet. They walked long distance back then. We didn't have, they didn't have Teslas or fancy cars like we do. I mean, I look at my beaten 2012 minivan and uh, they didn't even have that, you know. They had to walk. They had to travel long distances. So shoes meant a great deal. And so this approaching towards God and saying, hey, take off the sandals in which you are standing. It's holy ground. That's a big deal. That's saying, are you ready to give up your protection as you continue to step towards me? When you come to God in worship, do you approach him casually? Or do you come as though you were invited as a guest before a king? If necessary, adjust your attitude so it is, a, so it is suitable for approaching a holy God. My buddy and I in youth... He and I, we, uh, we used to spur one another on. And one of, the, uh, one of the things that he and I would say to each other 
it is, this is holy ground as we're worshiping. And, and we would oftentimes do a thing and we just kick our shoes off in that moment and just stand in the holy ground. Now, I can't believe my youth pastor allowed me to do that because, you know, I was youth. So stinky shoes. They're not as stinky today. But we would take off our shoes to give us a, a physical reminder of the holiness of God that we are entering his presence. Not just some sort of, hey, God, what's going on? But like the God of all gods. He's not just some sort of, hey, let me throw my feet on your coffee table kind of God. But he's also our sovereign God. If you're having a hard time remember, uh, uh, connecting with that moment, let me share another story. My dad. My dad is, is probably one of the best dads out there. I really relate to him. I, I look up to him a lot. And even now as I have three kids, I'm like, how did my dad do it with three kids? Like, he's one of the best dads ever. I'm panicking, and he's just as cool as a cucumber, whatever that term means. And, uh, and, and I've always looked up to him. He, growing up, would take me out for walks all the time. Sometimes, like a 10-minute, just around the block walk. Sometimes, an hour. I remember going out for him with one walk and took about four hours. I really needed a talking to. And, uh, but we would do these walks multiple times. And I remember walking with him. We were just minutes away from our house. And I said, Dad, Dad you're like the best friend ever. He goes, nope. What do you mean, Dad? Like, I just gave you a compliment here. Like, you're the best friend ever. He goes, no, no, no. I'm your dad. I'm not your friend. But, Dad, he goes, no, Brian, you already have enough friends. You need me to be your dad. And I, I, I said, Dad, you, you know me. Like, I have no friends at school. Uh, like, I need, I need some friends. I, I have, like, one friend. I, I, I need more friends. He goes, no, no, no. You will get more f- friends in time. You will. But you need me to be your dad. You need me to speak life into your life. You need me to speak correction into your life as well. You need me to have your blind spots kept, covered and checked over. And I remember having that moment with him. And that's when I came to recognize God a little further. God is our friend. He is our friend, but he's also the creator over all the cosmos. He's the one who created everything. Genesis 1, he's the one that even though the earth was dark and formless, he rested over that. He would begin to just breathe life into Adam and create Eve. He would begin to just do all those things, and yet we treat him like a floor mat sometimes. He is God. And so in this moment, Moses is saying, hey, he's saying to Moses, hey, this is who I am. Remember that first. Take off your shoes. Take off your sandals. And, and for some of us, it, we may need to take off our shoes every now and then to, ver, uh, to visually remind us. For some of us, it's our pride that we actually need to take off. For others, it's our hurt that we need to take off. For, for, it, it could be many things, but there are things before we enter the presence of God, we need to remove the things that we've been holding on of ourselves. So all this to be said, Moses has this powerful interaction with the most omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent God out there. And then from there, we would see the call of God on Moses' life to speak to the Israelites and free them out of captivity. We know how the whole story unfolds after that. We know where we see Jesus, uh, God uh, begin to equip Moses. Hey, just speak. I, I, I will help you. Hey, yeah, pick up that, that staff. Throw it down. Snake. Pick up that snake. Yeah, rod. Cool. Sweet, amazing moment there. But God would begin to equip Moses in that moment. And it wasn't necessarily the greatness of Moses, but it was the greatness of God just speaking through a humble servant. And from there, we would see the exodus of the Israelites out of Egypt and into the promised land. However, these gifts are so important. They come from God. And sometimes we seek the gifts, but we don't seek the giver. 
We, sometimes we want all the, the glamour and the fame, but we actually don't even seek the one who gives the gifts. Just as Pastor Josh even mentioned last week, and I've been mentioning to our youth group many, many times, God truly equips the called. However, the called must follow the giver. There's power in that. And Paul begins to address these Roman Christians to say, hey, now that you've gotten into the right humility posture, into the right humble posture, now begin to serve. Now begin to give out of that. Now begin to give of your understanding of who you are with God. The mission is to further the kingdom of God and ultimately that we are called to a lifestyle to pursue the giver of gifts and not the gifts themselves. However, upon receiving the gifts, it is our responsibility to use and share them. Paul is actually raising this gift that these gifts are not to glorify ourselves, but actually to serve each other. We would see Jesus in the New Testament. He would come alongside, and and the God of all gods, Jesus Christ himself, would come and take the posture of a servant. He would take a a cloth, toss it over his shoulder, and begin washing the feet of his disciples, serving them as they go forward. So we know also that God is not just calling us to this lifestyle and saying, hey, you go do that and I'll watch. But he himself is modeling it, saying he's asking us to do something that he himself is also willing to do. However, the scripture uh, later on with Romans 12 verses 4 to 8, we actually begin to see this body imagery being used. And he's really talking about this comparison act. Because I think so often we get looking at our gifts and going, yeah, but they're not like, you know, the gifts. Man, I wish I was as great of a drummer as Dave, you know. I love you, Dave. Man, I wish I looked as good on camera as that individual. Man, I wish I knew how to speak eloquently. Man, I wish that I just could serve and set fireworks off as amazing as, you know, some of those guys. Uh, We begin to look so outwardly that we actually lose sight of the true mission. And so what Paul is addressing here is, hey, no, no, if you're a teacher, then teach. If you're generous, give. If, if God is calling you to, to encourage, encourage. Whatever it is, it comes from him and not someone else. It, it, it comes from him and it's for others, but it doesn't come from others for him. It's for him and from him. Ultimately, whenever you, when you are honoring God with whatever gift God has given you, he is being glorified and that is the mission of, of the kingdom of God. Before I close here shortly, I need you to understand this. We need you. We need your gifts. Your gifts are not lesser gifts. Your gifts are not, there's no ranking there. Our gifts come from the one above, and he begins to send us out there. You have beautiful gifts out there, and and some of you guys are looking at yourselves going, well, no, I, I, I don't. Stop looking at yourself. Look to the giver. Just like we talked about C.S. Lewis, man, he's not even a Bible guy. Uh, he's a Christian, but he's, he didn't write the Bible. Uh, but C.S. Lewis says, stop looking at yourself. Just look to him. Just look at him. Stop, stop looking at, oh, oh. Look to God. And I, I promise you, as you look to him, he's going to begin to do things in your life and through your life that you're like, there's no other way than God that it happened that way. I look at myself, and, and I joked about it a little earlier with my concussion uh, stories that happened a little later. Those concussions have impacted my speech to this day, where I have moments where I'll begin speaking, and my tongue actually freezes in my mouth. And I have to change and alter my sentences and my statements to fix it, otherwise I'm actually stuck. But God, when, when I submit who I am to him, and I say, God, w- w- would you just be honored? Things just begin to un- unroll from there. And so for many of us, we, we begin to look at, uh, no, 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 God, you, you can't work through me. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. You come up with an excuse. Hey, no, I, God is saying, no, just, just look at me. Look at me. Scripture and then some closing points here. 
Galatians 5 here, verse 13. It goes like this. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Two very short points to close here. The first is this. Where's your focus? Where is your focus? Where do your thoughts tend to dwell? Where does your money tend to go? Where's your focus? Is it on the mission of God? The person of God? I tell you, when I look at myself and go, oh, no, I, I, I can't do it because I, I got these prior commitments. I, I can't honor God because you, you don't understand that's not my gifting mix. Uh, no, you, when I just seek God in that moment, man, things just begin to change. When, I, when I'm wanting to encourage an individual and going, ah, I feel led by God to encourage, but I, I don't think that that's the right timing. I don't think that's the right place. But the Lord just says, hey, give them a call anyways. Send them a text anyways. And I just begin to see the kingdom of God advance. Not because of how great I am. No, no. It's not what it is. But because I just seek him. I seek him. And other, others of you, this is point number two here. You have gifts here. They might be rusty or dusty because they've been sitting on the shelf proverbial shelf there use them use them share them with your neighbors with your family with your friends with your enemies Jesus taught us to love our enemies come to a position of humility saying God it's not about me it's about you and then he will use your gifts like you could never imagine let me invite all of you guys to stand in this room. If you want to use some time here to just pray, be, encourage one another, utilize your gifts, go for it. Go for it. If you want to come and pray with me or anything there, I'd be glad to do that as well. But guys, I love this church. It's been three great years here. And I've seen maturity and gifts being used here. Just a few short weeks ago, we actually saw our youth worship team leading worship. And it's funny because I think about them many, many times. I think of many individuals in our youth group and our young adult group today. Where many of them, they look at themselves and oftentimes I'll have a conversation with them. And, 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 and I recall back in fall of 2021 where they're going, there's no way we could ever you know, do worship that way. But I just said this, seek God. Seek God. That's all that matters. Just pursue him. And from there, oh man. And you guys were blessed that, that, that morning. I know I was. Because they pursued the giver, not the gifts. You pursue the giver, not the gifts. Pursue the giver, not even me. Pursue the giver, not even the others. Serve the others, because of your pursuit of him. Let me, let me read our, our blessing scripture here. Many of you guys would know it off by heart. And if you would, just put your hands in a receiving posture there. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious toward you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord, I thank you that we can pursue the one who is sovereign over all. And you care for us. And despite our shortcomings, despite our faults, you would use us to advance your kingdom. Lord, I'm reminded of Moses where you would use him despite his speech problems, despite his insecurities, that you would advance your kingdom through him. And if you can do it through him, I know you can do it through my friends here this morning. So Lord, would you be with my friends this morning as we go from this place? Would you keep us and 
watch us as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Have a great week, everyone. If you want further prayer or chats, you can come forward. Otherwise, have a great week. Say hi to someone on the way out.